Alright, so immediately I want to cover the setup I'm on. I'm at. I'm. I have right here. I'm still slowly creating my studio, so things are messy. I've got a microphone on a on a little tripod here. Uh, I've got I'm recording with my phone because we're gonna talk about cameras. So yeah, that's that's that covered. Anyways, welcome to the video. Hope you're doing good. Hope your day is uh, very nice. And let's talk about the Lumix S5, which is the camera I've been using for the past year. I have been very satisfied with this camera. This is a, literally a tiny beast for video. Why am I saying for video? because it lacks in some photography features and also because I don't consider this as a creator's, like a content creator's camera. It excels in some serious video features, but it also lacks in some, uh, some ease of use type of features. I'll explain a little bit. Immediately, let's cover the body of this camera. First of all, flippy screen. I have not found myself using an external monitor when using this camera because the flippy screen is one, very bright, two, color accurate, and third, very easy to use. So, it's a very good thing in this camera. The viewfinder, not so great. Uh, not that many pixels. It's great for occasional use, but uh, I don't use it much. I rely on the back display most of the time. The build quality, very good, very good grip, weather sealed body, SD card slot door is simple to open, two SD card slots, that's that. Other side we have the ports, it, they are covered by this uh, rubbery flippy door, which I, I'm not a big fan of, but it works and it keeps keeps the, uh, the, the water out, since it's a weather sealed body. You've got some, uh, some wheels here for your aperture, your shutter speed, uh, you've got your mode dial, photo feature dial, which is for time lapse, for timers, other stuff. Let's go back to the back. Back to the back. You've got a joystick. Love that. Gotta love that. Get a record button over here. A wheel. It's good. Like the body, the construction is very good. I found this to be very robust. And also, if you read a little bit about uh, Lumix cameras and the way they are built, there have not really been issues with that. Same with the lenses. I'll just show you, they are very strong, very well built, they feel solid. So, Lumix build quality, not really something you should be worried about. Next up, let's talk a little bit about specs. Uh, yes, you can pull them up on internet, I'll go over it very quickly because I want to get to the important stuff quickly. 24 megapixel sensor with uh, IBIS, very nice. The sensor has 14 plus stops in dynamic range, which is very nice and what you want. Then, also, you've got 4K 10-bit, both in 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second, but the 60 frames does give a little crop and drops it down to 420 instead of 422 10-bit. Alright, next up, you get the dual card slots, very nice. Slot 1 is UHS-2, slot 2 is UHS-1, so a little bit slower on the second slot. And it has contrast-based autofocus, uh, which is a downside, but we'll talk about it later. That's basically most of the things you should know. You can pull up your, uh, your specs on your computer or on your phone. Let's cover the important stuff, which is the cons. So I have switched over to the Lumix S5. I'm not really well lit right now, but at least you get to see the video quality, uh, you get to see just how it looks. Yeah, just how it looks. Anyways, let's cover the cons a little bit. And the biggest one is, of course, the autofocus. And that cannot be unnoticed uh, when you're choosing to buy this camera. I would say, personally, it doesn't bother me. Because I like to take full manual control when I take my videos, when I take my photos. Um, and I like to take a little bit of more time. However, if you have to shoot fast action, of course we can always say sports, but uh, if you're shooting events, if you're shooting something like dancing, where you need fast and reliable autofocus, uh, then uh, you should go over this camera and choose something else from Canon or from Sony or 
even the Lumix S5 II, which has way better autofocus with phase, uh, phase detect. I think if you're serious about videography specifically, you need to learn how to use manual focus quickly, reliably, and precisely. If you want to shoot some stuff like documentaries or advance onto uh, more uh, professional things. However, that also can be done on modern cameras with great autofocus by just using manual focus. So you're not forced to do that with other cameras. With this one, you might be sometimes. That's the autofocus. I personally don't find a problem with it because it, it doesn't bother my kind of workflow. But it might for you. You decide. If you're new into videography, I recommend you learn to use manual focus. It's not like you have to use it all the time. It's not like the contrast detect autofocus is bad. I'm using it right now. You didn't even notice. So you can shoot talking head videos, but I, you heard what I said. You can figure out for your own. The second con I found is compressed raw. It doesn't have it. Every single photo in RAW is 50 megabytes, which is not comp like crazy huge, but it, it does take up space, especially if you have to take photos of an event and there are uh, hundreds of photos. It fills up quite quickly. It also slows down your computer by having to read all that. So compressed RAW would be nice, it doesn't have it. So if you need that, choose something else. You could, I could also argue about the L-Mount Alliance, which is the mount uh, for lenses this camera uses. It is pretty vast by now. It has quite a few lenses. Some of them are very, very good. For example, this 24 to 105 that I'm using. Very robust, way better than the Sony offering. However, there is still no 16 to 35 f2.8. There are still other lenses that are missing from the lineup. And L-mount is still pretty fresh, so there's not that many cameras using it. There are Sigma is using it, Leica is using it, uh, Lumix is using it, I think DJI? DJI is an L-mount alliance member, very nice. And then we also have Blackmagic, I think, who are joining it with their newest camera. So there's a bright future for L-mount, uh, but it is still fresh and it is still developing. There's also not that many lenses you can buy secondhand from them. So you have to buy everything fresh, which is more money. This can also be counter-argued because you have stuff like the Sigma adapter where you can use EF Canon lenses uh, for your Lumix camera. This is a huge boy. This is the Tamron 15-30 to f2.8 VC, so it's stabilized. Uh, lens that was meant for a Canon EF amount cameras. However, with this adapter, I can mount it on my camera, on my Lumix camera. I can use the autofocus, but it's slow. And I have a lens that has yet to be released in the L mount. There are workarounds. That's what I'm trying to say. Let's go over the, the pros. That's what I want to talk about. Uh, let's, let's get into it. The pros, 4K 10 bit on a body this small, I've never had overheating issues, and this is unseen with a camera that is this affordable. The colors that come out of this camera are very good. When I came from Sony, the a7 III, which is a bit outdated, Sony has updated their colors. I saw the colors on the Lumix, and they are amazing. The skin tones, the way it, it the, the, the greens, how it, how it captures the greens in the grass or in the forest, it's crazy nice how sunsets look in this camera. And I've found myself not to use almost, like I, I barely touch the color grading anymore. Because I just, I've, I recorded everything in vlog, it has vlog built in by the way, so crazy dynamic range, just applying a color space transform node. So it transforms the colors from vlog to rec 709, and it, it just already looks almost complete. Add a little bit of a uh, uh, of a look with a uh, with a LUT or something and it's it's perfect. Like you don't need to work the colors much. I love the body of this camera. It is very comfortable. There's a lot of buttons. You can program everything. I found the uh, L-mount lenses, the Lumix lenses specifically, to be very robust and have very little, little 
uh, focus breathing. So you're investing in a new mount, but you're also getting new features for video, for professional video. You also get histograms, vector scopes. I don't even know. I don't want to go over all the individual features. But there's a lot, and I love it. Also, the image stabilization on this is crazy. It's so good. I've, I've not used my gimbal much at all. I've taken this camera, I've walked with it and shot with it. And it, the, the footage comes out usable. Not to the point where it's super smooth like a gimbal. It's natural shakiness. Like, it looks nice. I can leave it the way it is. I've already covered why this is not the best photography camera. However, it can still take banger photos. Astrophotography, I've been doing that recently. And it takes some insane photos. There's a lot, there's a lot of information, a lot of color. And 24 megapixels means that if there's too many megapixels, you lose on low light performance. And if there's too little, you lose on image quality. And 24 is my sweet spot. It's one of the reasons why I bought this camera. It's because there's no 12 megapixels like on the Sony a7S III, which is not good for, for, for photos. There is no 33 megapixels, which I've found to be too much on the a7IV uh, for my needs, for example. Uh, or not, let's not even talk about like the Canon R5 or a7R5. Crazy megapixels on those cameras. So 24 is plenty for printing, for posting, for cropping, for everything. Low light performance, insane. Sony has some of the best grain, how do you say, manipulation? No. When you record with a Sony camera in low light, it produces very pleasant grain. When you record with a Lumix, it's pretty equally pleasant. I have shot in 51,000 ISO countless times in the night when I'm shooting stars, when I'm shooting like just moments with friends in the night. Uh, just countless stuff. And it's usable. I wouldn't say at 51,000. It's a pleasant image. It's not. But it is usable. The grain does not get in the way too much. Also, you get dual native ISO when in log. That's 640 and 4000. So when you reach those ISO numbers, it, the noise drops to nearly zero. And you get the best dynamic range. I absolutely love this camera. I will have a very hard time getting rid of it. And it's proven by the fact that I used to switch cameras so much from Sony to Sony to Sony to Sony and then I switched to this and I'm just stuck. I also love the fact that I can invest in some EF glass which is cheap. Like this lens, this beast 15 to 30 f2.8, I got for 400 euros. Crazy price for something that costed over a thousand just a few years ago. You can invest in some EF glass, which you can later use on Canon cameras, on your uh, cinema cameras, on Blackmagic, on, on Red Komodo, on... You can adapt it to a lot of things, and you can use it on your S5 or S5 II. A lot of versatility when you go with this setup. The Lumix S5, right now on B&H, Brand new, $1,300, very good price. However, let's go on to mpb.com, a place where I shop a little bit every once in a while. And you put in Lumix S5, excellent condition Lumix S5 for just over a thousand euros. Or you can go on eBay and find a Lumix S5 for under a thousand euros. What a good price for 10-bit 4K image stabilized beast with dual native ISO and crazy good colors. Have I sold you this camera yet? I don't know. Check some footage. I know this video is a bit of a ramble. I love rambling about gear. I don't post much of it. I want to. Here's the big thing. If you buy a used S5 for a thousand euros and you use it for half a year and you don't like it, you're like, I want better autofocus. I want to, I like this Lumix camera, but I want to upgrade. You can put it on eBay and sell it 
for a thousand euros. You're not losing money. If you buy used and sell used, you most of the time you don't really lose much money. So, here's the thing. Buy this camera. No, I'm not gonna tell you to buy this camera. If you're interested in it, you can buy it. You can have you can have it, you can try it out. And if you don't like it, you can just sell it. If you do like it, you'll be pleasant to find a very nice capable camera for a very good price. But do I recommend it? If you're passionate about videography, if you're interested in making documentary style, cinematography, stuff like that, if you're if you like manual control, if you take your time with shots, this camera is for you. If you're a hybrid shooter, more of a video shooter that also takes photos, this camera also is for you. If you're a landscape photographer, this camera also could be very nice for you. But as I already covered, if you take fast action, if you're doing a lot of run and gun, if you like putting your camera on a gimbal and then just shooting away, avoid this camera. I would recommend getting the S5 II because it, it takes all the good things from this camera and just adds the autofocus and higher res quality. It's the same beautiful camera, but with fixed issues for twice the price. I would recommend the R6 II from Canon, the A7 IV, the A7S III, the ZV-E1. If you're run and gun, get those cameras instead, but be ready to pay the big price tag. That's the video. It's a very, I, I, I sort of became very serious talking about it. I've heard so many bad things on the internet just because of the autofocus. Hope you're doing good. Hope your day is great. Hope I made your, uh, your buying decision a little bit easier or harder. Who knows? If you have some questions, write them in the comments. I would love to respond to every single question you have. You can also DM it to me on Instagram. I will see you in the next video. Maybe it's the big video I'm working on. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's something else. We'll see. Hang on tight. Keep filming. Be creative. Do what you want to do.